Welcome back. Well, as cats get older, they often slow down and aren't as active. But what if you notice that your cat is more active and eating more, but perhaps losing weight at the same time? In studio today is our pet vet, Dr. David Visser, to discuss an overactive thyroid as a possible explanation. Good morning, doctor. Good okay, morning. now we on to cats, something I, you know, I'm oh, into. Gosh. Okay. Yeah, you know, with so much time spent on dogs, it's time to focus on cats today. You know, when cats are getting older, they can be losing weight, becoming a little bit uh, unthrifty and such, and it's easy to just think that they're getting older. But one of the unusual conditions can relate to the thyroid. Cats can get an overactive thyroid. And the thyroid, everybody needs to be remembering or reminded that uh, the thyroid is right underneath here. And we have sort of a butterfly-shaped thyroid. And cats actually have two thyroids, one on each side. So instead of being connected in the okay. middle, there's two separate ones. But um, there are two conditions that can affect the thyroid. One is that it's too low, not making enough hormone. That's called Hashimoto's disease in people. That's hypothyroidism. And the other one is where there's too much thyroid hormone being made called hyperthyroidism. It's also called Graves' disease in people. And these mostly happen in pets as they get older, but dogs are the ones that get low thyroid typically, and cats get this unusual condition of high thyroid or hyperthyroidism. That's what we're talking about today. Gotcha. Okay, so where can you go wrong with the, the thyroid then? I mean, it's like it's a thing with people, so I know it's a big thing with animals too. Yeah, so low and high are the two main hormone producing things. There are other conditions that can affect the thyroid. Uh, thyroid is, can be prone to various types of tumors as well, so it's just important to know know the or have a physical exam that includes evaluation of this area normally the thyroid can't be palpated because it's so small but if there's a problem with it like if it's overactive it can become enlarged and that can be palpable as one of the early signs okay all right um, so how does it actually affect them though like what behavioral things are you looking for We'll normally see cats um, becoming less, uh, initially almost like um, a rejuvenating kind of condition. These cats that have been maybe sedentary and they're reaching their senior years, we'll all of a sudden see them be more active. Uh, sometimes they will have uh, an increase in the appetite. Sometimes people have described this increase in appetite as voracious, like they just can't get enough food. But they have weight loss. And there's not very many conditions that cause an increase in appetite, yet weight loss. So these two unusual things going together should be a signal for folks at home. It certainly is for your veterinarian. But the stress that happens because of that overactive thyroid, a lot of um, uh, blood pressure increases can cause pressure on internal organs. Those inter internal organs can struggle in their normal functions and actually begin to shut down. Mm. And of course, this condition, as it produces the weight loss and the stress on the organs, can progress to be fatal if it is untreated. So this is important for us to not just see this as the rejuvenating uh, young uh, cat thing fountain of youth, but rather that this is something that is a stress that if perpetuated uh, can affect the cat's longevity. Mm, okay, so what, is, what does it look like physically on the outside? Are there like any physical signs that you could say, okay, maybe this is besides just obviously losing weight? Yeah, the signs that we talked about are, are important ones, but then cats that have this condition tend to have um, almost a, a, a lanky body to them. Um, th their coat becomes uh, unkempt sometimes because they're just uh, overactive, but not necessarily taking care of themselves. So they almost look like they've been through the ringer a little bit <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and strung out in that in that regard sometimes there can be um, an intense appearance to their face which is hard to describe eyes wide open sometimes there are pants because it affects people like graves disease affects people like that sometimes you'll see like bulging of the eyes and yes. I was kind of wonder would you see similar it's things not to as that? common okay. but some people will notice this um, almost anxious look to the cat's face yeah absolutely okay mm -hmm. okay so do you know what actually causes the problem to occur? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, there's not really a, a particular answer to that. It can happen, of course, in older cats, so we always wonder whether it is just an age-related um, derangement that happens in the body. But there has been some new research that is showing that a fire retardant uh, chemical used in furniture back in the 60s and 70s may play a role. And cats, of course, are spending most of their time on couches. Wow. And of course, they're getting exposed in this way. But they've drawn a correlation in people. They're wondering whether that same kind of correlation is in pets. Now, that's far from knowing that that's the case. But people that have old furniture, you know, have to be aware that it may still have some of that fire retardant if this is indeed a related um, cause. I didn't even know that. And that impacts people, mm -hmm. too. Um, what's, how do you diagnose the condition? Well, fortunately, there's a real easy blood test that can be done. Measuring thyroid hormone 
hormone. It doesn't change very much throughout the day, so a single sample test can tell us whether the thyroid level is higher than it should be normal or even low, as we talk about in dogs. Based on finding that test uh, result tells us then what we need to do. Sometimes we'll need to make sure that the other internal organs are not adversely affected when we find that the thyroid is high, but in any case, a whole body evaluation prior to considering what treatment options there are. Okay, so considering that maybe you caught it early and there's no other effect to any other organs, what does that treatment look like? Yeah, so the treatment, we need to lower the thyroid hormone. And basically, there's four different ways. Two of them are curative, and two of them are management or palliative. Radioactive iodine. So this is hard to describe, except iodine is absorbed by the thyroid. And if it's radioactive, then selectively, it's like a targeted missile to the thyroid gland that is overactive. That is considered curative because it destroys the gland that's affected. Surgery to remove the thyroid gland can also be curative. Remember, cats have two, so if only one is affected, they still have the other one function. Now, to manage it, a medication can be used to lower the thyroid hormone. That can be used either temporarily or long-term. There just may be some long-term side effects to this medication. And then, of course, iodine is essential for the body and essential for making thyroid hormone. There is a prescription diet that is deficient in iodine that can be fed, again, ongoing, just to prevent thyroid hormone overproduction. Gotcha. Wow, that's some good information. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Visser. I appreciate you being here. You're welcome. If you want to contact the pet vet, Dr. David Visser, you can reach him at the Center for Animal Health by calling 888-PETS-VETS, or you can always shoot him an email at michanapetvet at comcast.net. We'll be right back.